Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in. And before we get on to today's topic, you've probably seen this telescope lurking in the background, either in the videos or with some of my uh, thumbnails, including this little cheeky chappy here. And it's one of my telescopes, and it's a Skywatcher 12-inch Dobsonian. It's actually the last one they ever sold, and so, quitting a very long story short, um, ended up in my possession. Uh, very nice all-round scope, very easy to use, couple of fingers, swing it around there, very easy to move. See that um, nice mirror down there? And um, yeah, a good all-round scope for, for deep space and even planetary and double stars, which I will come on to very shortly. But, um, it may be slightly larger than your average scope, but it comes with something that you might see on a lot of telescopes. So, I'll just put the lens cap on. Turn it round, then you probably notice it has these two covers there. One is removable and the other is not. So what are they? It's basically a built-in aperture mask for this telescope. And you, you will see it on many other telescopes in, including some refractors. And all you can, what you do, take one off and it push it onto the other one and what you're left there with this particular telescope is a 50 millimeter aperture and so why would you want to view with a telescope like that and you can instantly and there are some videos out there on YouTube which show how to make your own and you can make um, cut out a cardboard cover and make them like four or five inches or, or whatever you want the diameter of the aperture mask to be so, if you're looking at the bright, a bright object like the moon, it might be overpoweringly bright and dazzling with this telescope. So you may have a, 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 a density filter or a moon filter, a polarising filter that will cut down that, that brightness and you'll be able to look at the moon comfortably. But you may not have. And so what you're doing here, by viewing through that, and make sure that you turn it round so the spider veins are not obstructing it, that then becomes a 50mm telescope and that will significantly reduce the brightness and glare for a more comfortable view of the moon. But what you're also doing though is you are, re you are reducing the aperture of the telescope but with, with larger telescopes like this one in particular you do when there is a lot of atmospheric turbulence it is increased with a larger aperture of the telescope and so you may be in theory reducing brightness and resolution but the image will be more steady and so try it with and without by, by all means and see and uh, see how it um, affects your image at, at any one time and um, but it can also be used I, I personally found on double stars and that is if there's a, a quite a bright pair of double stars and the glare is overpowering the other one you can reduce you can view through the smaller aperture and again you will reduce that resolution but also the flaring from the stars will be reduced and so you'll so see two small pin pinpoints of light rather than two big brighter stars that are you know drowning each other out or if there's a bright one drowning out a slightly dimmer one this will help improve that and also with the planet on very rare occasions but it does, ha does happen the scene is absolutely terrible and uh, with a aperture mask with a large telescope like this or my previous 10 inch Dobsonian um, I've actually been able to in improve planetary detail because again in theory you are reducing the resolution of the telescope but you're also reducing the atmospheric turbulence you know you know what it's like when you look it looks like you're looking through rippling water and the effects are, are terrible this if you're looking at the planets reducing the aperture to a smaller size will reduce the atmospheric turbulence and give you a steadier image and what I've also seen somebody do yeah excuse me I'm gonna get something Right, Q, excuse me, one prop, 
this is a solar filter. I have seen people put you know a bit more securely than that, but if you cannot afford a solar filter, solar filter to fit completely over the, the diameter of your scope, you can get a, a solar filter that fits rather better than that one and um, securely tape it into place and you'll be able to do some solar observing as well on a budget by, by buying a much smaller solar filter than buying a big one to cover the whole aperture and you will, now believe me I've tried it with this securely taped on, you will be able to view the, the sun as well. So there are a few ideas about um, the advantages of a, a aperture mask for a telescope. By all means, uh, if you've tried this yourself, if you've made one, let us know about it in the comments and uh, whether it improves or not your night's viewing. So as always, thank you very much for watching and please check out the link in the description below.